Today is day number 69, very nice, of the $1,000 account challenge, and we are up $242 in the account, or 2.04% of the total portfolio balance. We now are at $12,000 in the account, which is awesome. So we're just continuously plugging away, continuously adding these base hits to this account and watching it grow over time. Longevity is the game. If you don't know, my name is Gates. I'm taking $1,000 and I'm day trading options to see how far we can grow this account. Today, straight off the day trade watch list, we had Google as a long idea above $157. Now I traded live with the team, so I don't have any typed alerts to show you, but we can break down the stock and the entries and exits anyways. We're on the one minute time frame here and Google was an up gapper this morning. And what's interesting about this is that it was an up gapper into the all time highs. So the only thing that we were looking for this morning was a break of the pre-market highs for higher highs to be put in. That's why 157 was a relevant level. Now we're not trading in the first five minutes. The stock does break the level within the first five minutes. I considered an entry right here, but I said, you know what, let's stay patient and see if this is actually going to hold. It pulled back and then we get three candles up over the trigger level into the high of day. These three candles for me serve as confirmation that this dip down gets bought up and Google does indeed want to continue higher. We get a pullback and I take the very first entry that is offered on a pullback, understanding that the stock could continue to dip lower. So why would I take an entry understanding that the stock could continue to dip lower? Why would I just not take this entry and then wait to take this entry down here instead? Well, let me tell you, we have no idea if this is going to dip lower at the time. The stock is at all time highs. Maybe it has enough momentum to have one red candle dip and then rally straight up into the high of day and we get 20% on this trade. If we do not take that first entry, we miss out on the opportunity of a higher move. But by taking the first entry with smaller size, we mitigate our risk in the event that this does pull back against us, but then also allow ourselves to capitalize on the momentum top side just in case this does decide to run. So the question to me was asked, Gates, when do you know, uh, how do you know when to size down versus when to size up? You size down when you do not have confirmation, you size up when you do. So again, understanding that the stock could dip against me and my position here initially, I size down, we get the move lower and I average into the trade. Unfortunately, at this time, SPY was selling pretty aggressively and as the stock dipped just below 157, I was already down about 16% on the position. I made the decision to cut the trade because what I did not want to happen was something like this where we get a big flash candle down to the low of day or close to the low of day and now all of a sudden, rather rather than being down 16%, we're down probably 25 or 30%. So I did not want to be in a situation like that. So I made the decision to cut the trade here. And then I told the team that we will go back in on this if it confirms. And sure enough, two minutes after we close the initial position, we do get confirmation. So not only, not only do we get a break of the downtrend trend line here, we also get a move up off of the 157 trigger level and we get higher highs on the stock, all of this confirming the move for us. So we went ahead and market bought into this strength about halfway through this candle and got the move up close to the high of day. Now I did scale out of this trade a couple of times. It was all in this same area. Uh, I think for like 17, 18, and, th and then eventually closing out the full position at 20% gains. This right here, one trade was enough to recoup the losses from this previous trade and put me green on the day. And I even took another loss after this and I was still net green on the day. This is proper sizing. When you do not have confirmation, I'm gonna repeat it again. When you don't have confirmation, you want to size down on your positions. When you do have confirmation, you size up. The next trade that I took was on Microsoft MSFT. We actually had a long trigger placed at $427 and I saw all of this consolidation here at 426. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I think I got too micro focused on the one minute time frame, And I was thinking if this breaks out from this consolidation, maybe it does run back up to the high of day and we could capitalize on that and take an entry prior to the trigger level, which was at 427. This turned out to be a mistake uh, because again, I, I, got, I just got faked out on this. We see a pop move up here outside of this pattern or this consolidation. And I used that as confirmation on this higher volume too. I used that as confirmation that this was going to move higher 
and it just didn't happen. Microsoft reversed and moved right back down, and I wound up actually cutting this for about a 20% loss. But this was, again, a sized down position because we did not have confirmation. In this instance, what I mean by us not having confirmation is that the stock is not making a higher low at this time, nor is it breaking the top trigger level. Therefore, an entry prior to the trigger level means that you most likely do not have confirmation. You might be limited on profit margin a little bit, and you should probably consider sizing down on that as well. That's all that I have for you today. Net green on the day up $242 in the account. I will see you tomorrow when we continue the $1,000 account challenge. Thank you so much for your time. Press that like button for me if the video has helped you out and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel as well. It's just the best way to support me and this type of work that I do.